Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, A Monk in Cloud. This is the part two of some common scenario based questions that you might encounter in AWS examinations. So in this video, we will be discussing some scenario based questions which was not covered in the first video so that you might encounter in AWS exams and their solutions as well. So let's jump right into the video. So the first scenario you need to set up an asynchronous data replication to another RDS database instance hosted in another AWS region. How can you achieve this? So the solution would be to set up asynchronous data replication to another RDS database instance in different AWS region. You can create a read replica. So this is important, the read replica. So this allows you to replicate your data from a primary RDS database instance to the replica, ensuring data redundancy and availability. In the next scenario, you require a parallel file system for hot, which means frequently accessed data. What AWS service can you use? So to address the need for a parallel file system for frequently accessed data, you can utilize Amazon FSx for leisure. It is a fully managed high performance file system optimized for workloads that require fast access to data. Hope you are getting my point. In the next scenario, you need to implement synchronous data replication across availability zone with automatic failover in Amazon RDS. What should you do? So to achieve synchronous data replication across availability zone with automatic failover in RDS, you can enable multi AZ deployments. So two things you need to remember for synchronous replication, it is always multi AZ deployment. Whereas for the asynchronous replication, it is always read replica. So don't miss out on these two points. Now coming back to this scenario, this configuration, the multi AZ deployment configuration will automatically replicate your database synchronously to a standby instance in a different availability zone, ensuring high availability and automatic failover. So hope you are getting what I'm saying. In the next scenario, you require a storage service to host cold, which means infrequently accessed data which AWS service can fulfill this requirement. So to host infrequently accessed data, you can leverage Amazon S3 Glacier, which is a low cost storage service designed for long term archiving and backup of data that is accessed very frequently or very less frequently. The next scenario, you need to set up a relational database with a disaster recovery plan having an RPO of one second and RTO of less than one minute. What should you use to achieve a, re a relational database with a disaster recovery plan having an RPO of one second and RTO of less than one minute, which is you can utilize Amazon Aurora global database. So it provides low latency global replication enabling rapid failover and ensuring minimal data loss. The next scenario, you want to monitor database metrics and receive email notifications when a specific threshold is breached. How can you accomplish this? To monitor database metrics and receive email notification for breached thresholds, you can create an SNS topic, which is simple notification service topic and add the topic in the CloudWatch alarm. So this will enable you to receive alerts via email when specific metric thresholds are crossed. So you need to set up DNS failover to a static website. How can you achieve this? This is the next scenario. So to achieve this one to set up DNS failover to a static website, you can use Amazon Route 53, which is with a failover option basically. By configuring Route 53 to failover to a static S3 website bucket or CloudFront distribution, you can ensure high availability and automatic failover for your website. 
In the next scenario, you want to implement automated backup for all your EBS volumes. What should you do? So to implement automated backups for all your EBS volumes, you can use Amazon Data Lifecycle Manager. So this service allows you to automate the creation and retention of EBS snapshots based on customizable schedules and lifecycle policies. In the next scenario, you need to monitor the available swap space for your EC2 instances. How can you monitor this metric? So to monitor the available swap instance or swap space for your EC2 instance, you can install the CloudWatch agent and configure it to monitor the swap utilization metric. So this enables you to track the swap space usage and take appropriate actions if necessary. So that wraps up for our discussion on common exam AWS exam scenario based questions and their solutions. Remember to pack practice these scenarios and familiarize yourself with the appropriate solutions to excel in your AWS exams. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more AWS exam tips and tricks. Happy learning. That's it for this video. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.